as we know, many people struggle with body image every day. It's not just Jeremy Corbett. And according to our next guest, those troubles probably start a lot earlier than you think. I want to be an artist and a doctor once I grow up. I want to be a ballerina. I want to be a teacher when I grow up. That's amazing, but by the time these young women get to secondary school, one third of them will develop body image issues, and most will worry about gaining weight. As little girls, they felt they could rule the world. What bears them off course, from becoming the leaders they wanted to be, to saying things like this? I sometimes don't feel beautiful. Actually, a lot of the times I don't feel beautiful, and that's sad. So what does happen between primary school and getting older that our kids end up feeling so con concerned with the way that they look? Firstly, it's heartbreaking and it's something we really need to address. I think little girls become incredibly aware of their appearance and, and their body shape and size at a much younger age than boys. And you watch their posture when they're six and running around the schoolyard and a lot of, I'm generalising, but a lot of that is, has disappeared even by the time they're 12 and 13. So fostering uh, a belief in, in a deep self-worth so that young girls aren't as susceptible to the passing comments of others, I think is a really big step in what, that we need to take. How do you do that? What can we do as parents? So I think uh, in the way that we, the language we use and the comments we make towards children, I think there's, we all have these questions, should we be commenting on whether the child is beautiful or handsome? Uh, and I think if we're called to do that, it's something that's awoken in our own hearts and, and if you feel called to do that, it's a beautiful thing. But we need to focus just as much, if not more, on the other traits that are just game changing in people's lives. So their strength, their independence, their courage, their kindness. I think talking about that is just as important. So now when I see my nieces, I should say, hey, independent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's really tricky because sometimes I think when we say that they're gorgeous or they're beautiful, we're talking about their soul and their spirit. Mm. Yeah. And you just want to eat them and they've got, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's yeah. that Absolutely, I'm with well. you. I'm with yeah. you. <laughs> you know, uh, Dr. Libby, if I may call you Dr. Libby, um, when you go into a bookshop these days, the self help section is huge. And I'm wondering if that's maybe part of the problem. We spend so much time thinking about ourselves, we're getting too narcissistic. Yes, yeah, so I'm actually travelling throughout New Zealand at the moment speaking all about hormones because that is the biggest topic that people told me in a survey they wanted to learn about. So if we talk about the, the ways people want help, it's because they're suffering. So I think people are looking for answers and it's actually the definition of beauty that I'm trying to change. I think if we have a deeper conversation, you know, some of the clips that we just saw are, are, are really heartbreaking. We need a deeper conversation and get, get younger girls as well as older women to define what beauty is for them. Is it a light in someone's eyes? Is it when someone's highly energised and living with, with enormous passion? Uh, for some, beauty is probably freedom. So I think we need to expand our definition of that and foster that in, in people of all ages. Uh, this is your new book. It's called The Beauty Guide and it's not all uh, touchy-feely stuff. There's some really practical stuff as well. Can you give us some tips tonight? Uh, what should I be eating for my skin, for example? <laughs> well, our antioxidants are the thing that our skin loves. So they're found in all of our coloured uh, plant foods, all of our fruits and veggies. But in saying that, I I think uh, to, to not even get into the specifics of that, our body has the equipment to break down whole real food and not that long ago that's, that was food. For me there's no such thing as junk food, there's just junk and there's food and we need to be helping people to, to eat far more food to help foster that inner glow. What should Jeremy <laughs> be eating for his eyebrows? <laughs> Well, do you know that if the outer third of your eyebrow starts to fall out, it can be a sign that your thyroid isn't working as effectively as it needs to or iron deficiency? And it's one of the things I've talked about in the book because I think it's really lovely that we have all these options these days. And Jeremy has this option as well, you know, to get tattooed eyebrows on. That's a great option that we have these days. But if you don't also address what's going on behind the scenes, so if it's a thyroid problem or iron deficiency, you might have a greater problem down the track. So. Yeah. Good to know. Uh, she's got uh, a huge, um, a huge number of fans right across New Zealand, and they'll be looking forward to her new book, *The Beauty Guide* by Dr. Libby. It's out tomorrow. Please thank Dr. Libby Weaver. Thank you. <laughs>